Hello, I'm Tom Rothman of 20th Century Fox. Welcome to Fox Legacy. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Another basement, another elevator. How could the same shit happen to the same guy twice? When I say the word franchise, you might think of McDonald's or 7-Eleven. But in the film business, a franchise is a series of movies with a continuing storyline of the same key characters. Over the years of successes and failures with sequels, prequels, and spin-offs, I've come to believe that the single most important element of a winning franchise is a great central character. A memorable, original, distinctive character. Whether a hero, Indiana Jones, a villain, Hannibal Lecter, or maybe a bit of both, Darth Vader. At Fox, we're lucky enough to have had, over the years, a number of great characters who audiences have wanted to see again and again, from Luke Skywalker to Wolverine. But perhaps our most enduring character is one of the most unlikely. A hard luck everyman, New York City cop, with a knack for landing in the wrong place, at least for the bad guys, at the wrong time. John McClane is a wise-cracking, head-cracking, stoical hero with an anti-authoritarian streak that has endeared him to audiences for almost 20 years. Today, Bruce Willis seems an obvious choice to play a reluctant hero with a great sense of humor. But in 1988, Willis was not a movie star, at least not yet. He was, however, a huge TV star, appearing in the series Moonlighting alongside Sybil Shepherd, where he displayed great charisma and charm. He was a kind of a working man's Cary Grant. Say, I close in about an hour. Maybe we can go get a drink. Just the facts, man. Just the facts. Now, there was a lot of buzz before Die Hard opened about whether Bruce Willis was the right guy to play an action star. And the negotiation for his contract became the stuff of Hollywood legend, displaying the same kind of cockeyed confidence that would become a trademark of many of his characters in years to come. Willis held out for and got one of the highest acting fees ever paid at that time for a single film. And this was his first lead role. But on opening night, an action star was born. And that fee has paid dividends ever since for Fox and for audiences worldwide. Who are you then? Just a fly in the ointment, Hans. The monkey in the wrench. The pain in the ass. One of the enduring ironies for those of us lucky enough to work at 20th Century Fox is that Nakatomi Plaza, the iconic building from the first film now recognized around the world, is actually Fox Plaza. Fox initially considered a building in Texas for the shoot, but production designer Jackson DeGovia discovered that the perfect building was right here on the lot. Many hundreds of Fox employees walk in the entrance to Nakatomi Plaza every single day. It's hard to be in that building and not look above your head wondering if John McClane is crawling through the air vent somewhere. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Die Hard has actually become a generic descriptive term in the movie lexicon. It's Die Hard on a bus. We made that movie actually speed. It's Die Hard on a train, a boat, a bridge, etc. until legend has it, someone came in with a great new pitch. They said it's Die Hard in a building. That story may be apocryphal, but it's very telling. Because it's actually not the concept of Die Hard that makes it endure. I believe it's the character. Have you done that kind of stuff before? The original action hero is back in Live Free or Die Hard, the fourth installment in the franchise. Mr. Willis is as stout and defiant as when he began. And the audience has missed John McClane. The title plays on the New Hampshire motto, of course, but much more really on the attitude and mythology of John McClane. It expresses his ethos very well. Plus, the film is set over the independence holiday. In Europe, where that could convey an unintended xenophobia, it's called the more cyber-friendly Die Hard 4.0. But here in the US of A, 
That's what John McClane does and believes. He lives free and he dies hard. True to the development history of the franchise, the idea for the film came from a script based on a Wired magazine article. The villain is a digital mastermind with every modern angle figured. All this, by the way, based absolute reality. But there's just one problem. There's an old-fashioned analog fly in his digital ointment. A guy who is in the right place for his country at the right time. And he ain't going down easy. He's not a CGI-created superhero or a fantasy figure with a toy line. Now he's a regular guy. He bleeds, he suffers, he's alone. But he will not quit. And in that fundamental regard for all his Neanderthal ways, John McClane, as embodied still by the incomparable Bruce Willis, I think reminds us of what's the very best in the human spirit. yippee ki -yay. For Fox Legacy, I'm Tom Rothman. Good night. I'll take it from here.